We're gonna make one of the most expensive pizzas that we ever have, and we're gonna pit it against the cheapest. This portion of today's video is sponsored by Vital Farms. You ever trace your eggs back to the farm they came from? Let me tell you, brother. There's nothing better than a pasture-raised egg. Each Vital Farms hen enjoys a minimum of 108 square feet of roaming room in fresh open pastures. Which is more room than I get right here between these two dudes. On the side of each box, you'll find where the eggs were laid. Type in that name at vitalfarms.com backslash farm and you'll be able to get a 360 degree peek at the pasture. Why does that matter? Because they taste great and they look great. Vital Farms started as a single family farm, but we love a good success story. So now they work with about 300 family farms to give their hens the life they deserve. Oh, and they're a certified beet corporation, which doesn't stand for breakfast like I originally thought, but it does mean they have a purpose to improve the lives of people, animals, and the planet through food. You guys know I would never promote anything that I don't care about. This is something we've actually exclusively been using on the channel for the past couple of years without even knowing them before. To learn more about Vital Farms or where to buy them, visit vitalfarms.com backslash BS free. Thank you to Vital Farms for sponsoring that portion of today's video. Now another recipe. Oh. Is it the Easter Bunny? Ah! Okay, so welcome back to Studio E. At the end of the day, I don't know why we're doing this. I guess what we want to find out, does more money equal more flavor? Usually, no. But there's only one way to find out. So we're gonna take one of our most basic pizzas, a New York style, and we're gonna make a pizza using the most expensive exotic ingredients that make sense on a pizza, at least to me. What more is there to say? So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Hey, we got a tour of pizza. All right, sorry. We have two doughs, both of which aren't really that expensive. So let's take a look at the two. We got the American dough, which of course has sugar in it. That's how you make it American. And the Italiano, which is literally just yeast, water, salt, and double O-tipo flour. The king of pizza flour. You'll notice that both doughs are using grams. Now, why is that, Papa? It's more accurate. And if you care about your pizza, you'll make it accurate. But anyway, now for the American pizza dough, get yourself a large bowl, add 950 grams of all-purpose flour, 25 grams of granulated sugar, there's the American piece, 19 grams of fine sea salt, then off to the side, get yourself 617 grams of water, it's around 95 degrees Fahrenheit, then whisk in 14 grams of instant yeast, once that gets nice and uh, yeasty. Pour that into your flour mixture, mix by hand till you get a shaggy dough, and then knead until perfectly smooth. About five minutes. Cover that with plastic wrap and rise at room temperature for about two hours or overnight in the fridge. Now for the Italian pizza dough, it's similar mixing process, but this time you're just gonna do large bowl, 800 grams of double O tipo flour. Specifically, you gotta trust Papa, okay? I'm here for you. Mix in 16 grams of fine sea salt till thoroughly combined, then separately get yourself 512 grams of water around 95 degrees Fahrenheit and whisk in three to four grams of instant yeast. Now for this dough, you mix the water in there, you knead it for about five to six minutes till beautifully smooth, but there is no rising at room temp for this. You absolutely must wrap it in plastic wrap tightly and place in the fridge overnight. You wanna get the taste of Italy wafting into the air. Now, once they're done rising, it's the same thing for both of them. You're gonna divide them into six even pieces. The Italian pizza dough will yield 250 gram pieces and the American pizza dough will yield 300 gram pieces. Sheep each of those into toit balls. Place on a greased baking sheet, cover with greased plastic wrap and let that proof for two to three hours. The exact same time and same portion size for each dough. Now that we have our dough, let's begin with the cheap stuff, but no skimping on any flavor at all. In a sauce pot, add in one tablespoon or nine grams of extra virgin olive oil and one tablespoon or 14 grams of unsalted butter. Set to medium heat and just barely once that butter starts to melt. Add in six cloves of garlic, rough chopped, season lightly with salt to taste, and sweat your garlic for about one minute or until beautifully fragrant. Then add in two teaspoons or four grams of red pepper flakes. Cook until lightly toasted. Then finally, add in a 28 ounce or 800 gram can of crushed tomatoes. Optionally, you can add a splash of water to your can, swirl it around, and pour it in. Follow that with two teaspoons or two grams of dried oregano, and one teaspoon or one gram of dried thyme. One and a half tablespoons or 21 grams of granulated sugar, salt to taste, give it a little stir, then bring that up to a sensuous simmer. Reduce to low, and cook that down for about five to seven minutes or until reduced and thickened beautifully. Adjust your salt levels and that is your sauce. Now listen, 30 minutes before your dough is done, if you're doing this in the oven, get out a pizza stone to the lower third of your oven, heat that bad boy to the maximum temperature, and then assemble. Look, the toppings of the baking is really simple. Once your sauce is completely cooled, take a ball of dough, punch it down in the center, and make a nice thin perimeter. That's the crust, right? We all know that. Drip it over your closed fists and work your pizza around the entire perimeter of itself, gently stretching using your knuckles to get a nice 12 to 13 inch pie. Spread on a couple tablespoons of your sauce in a circular motion, beautifully and then sprinkle on fresh grated mozzarella and Monterey Jack cheese. You can also go pure mozzarella, totally fine. Just please grate it fresh. Now pop that bad boy onto a pizza peel, or in this case, a cutting board. Now carefully slide that onto your preheated pizza stone, close the oven, and bake for six to eight minutes. And what should emerge is a beautiful and rather relaxed pizza. We've seen this kind of pizza before. Now let's kick it all the way up. 
First, a glaze using the most expensive vinegar that I could find. Get a large pan, add a 1 cup or 240 milliliters of black garlic vinegar, 1 cup or 240 milliliters of mulberry black vinegar, 1 cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar, and half a cup or 115 grams of rough chopped palm sugar. Set over medium high, stirring occasionally, and once that comes to a boil, let it reduce for about 5 to 8 minutes, or until reduced by half, and the bubbles look like this. Now for the sauce. Get a medium sauce pot, add in a 15 ounce or 425 gram can of roasted crushed tomatoes, turn the heat to medium high, and reduce that for about 5 minutes. Now while that's reducing, get 3 red bell peppers, place them directly onto an open flame. It's like that chestnut song, but I'm not gonna say it. Monetization check? Good stuff. Rip your burner as hot as it'll go. If you don't have a gas stove, what do you do? But the goal is to get it charred all over your pepper. Now pop that into a bowl, cover with plastic wrap, let it sit for five minutes, then remove, clean them all off, take out the seeds, then get yourself a blender, add your clean pepper flesh, your crushed tomatoes, four cloves of raw garlic, half a cup or 75 grams of roasted almonds, one tablespoon or 11 grams of sherry vinegar, one teaspoon or four grams of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon or two grams of cayenne powder. Pop on your lid and blend that on high until it is as smooth as you can physically get it. But hold on, buddy. To get it even smoother, you're then going to stream in to emulsify. Half a cup plus two tablespoons or 115 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Let it blend. Should get nice and creamy. Pour that into a bowl. Adjust salt levels as needed. And that's essentially a romesco inspired tomato sauce, which I guess is basically what romesco is. This is not normally how I would make it, but hey, it tastes great. Now, I want you to lay back and prepare yourself. You see this? This is a whole leg of the finest, most expensive, most rare jamon money can buy. Jamon is kind of like prosciutto, but it's made with a specific kind of Iberico piggy wiggy and is aged for four years. The whole leg alone totals up to $1,000. Breaking it down requires some skill. First, we're gonna cut close to the shank, down, and then starting from the meat end, being careful not to remove too much meat, you're gonna cut towards that to create sort of a check mark shaped chunk. Pull that out, and now you have the room that you need to slice. But before you do that, trim up any yellow excess fat or skin so you start to reveal some white fat. I'm cutting only the amount of fat that I want for how deep that I'm going to slice. Now, I'm not gonna slice this whole thing, but get yourself a proper hamon slicing knife, and as thinly as you can, enjoy every little slice. Now, I'm about to do something that I've never done before, and to be frank, I kind of hate. But you know what? I thought in the spirit of fun, we're gonna make this special, and well, as expensive as we possibly can. How do we do that? Well, we wrap each individual hand-sliced hamon by yours truly in an individual piece of 24 karat gold. Now, if that isn't stupid, then I don't know what is. Now, there's probably two parties of you right now. One is saying, Josh, this is ridiculous, but I love it. And the other one's like, Josh, you've broken every written culinary commandment just now. How could you do this to me? And to you, I say, I'm sorry. Look, enough talk. Let's assemble this and see this thing. Again, shape your dough around the same size, 13 to 14 inches. Really stretch that bad boy out. Keep that crust thin, but not too thin. Add in your sauce, spread it beautifully. Then we're going to sprinkle on a generous amount of freshly grated smoked scamorza cheese. This is a southern Italian cow's milk cheese that's hung, left to dry, and sometimes smoked. Anyway, put that into a proper pizza oven set to around 700 degrees. Fahrenheit. Cook for 25 seconds, quarter turn, and cook for another 25 to 35 seconds. Pull out your beautifully burnished pizza and prepare to top it. First, a nice fresh grating of Parmigiano Reggiano, followed by a generous drizzle of your most expensive vinegar glaze. And hold on, we got something else here. You ever seen fresh hearts of palm? Probably not. Here I have fresh hearts of palm, very thinly mandolin, salt to taste, olive oil, lemon juice, toss, 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 sprinkle that on, some freshly torn basil leaves. Now, depending on the seasonality, these very thinly sliced black truffle, a whole miniature tin of the finest caviar. And last but certainly not least, your gold-plated hamon. If I'm being frank here, looking at this pizza, it does not look like it should be eaten. But you know what? We're gonna take one for the team here. Let's taste test and find our winner. All right, we got two pizzas. A New York style, sort of. And one that I hate. Something about this is not right, but I'm doing it for science. Expensive science. We'll start with uh, Mr. Basic. I goddamn cold. I mean, it tastes like pizza. What do you expect? It's good, though. Now this on the other hand. Yeah, drum roll going. Holy sh**. I'm kind of shocked right now. I think this is one of the best pizzas we've ever made on this channel. It's smoky, salty, balanced. There's sweetness in there. There's, there's acidity. Is the gold necessary? No. If you make this pizza, you're eating gold. It's the highest level of flex. If I had to pick a winner out of these two pizzas, this is ultimately the winner. But there's a big barrier of entry, which is this. But you want to know what has no barrier of entry? B-roll. 